19 COVID stories. Taking things in hand. October 2020. The struggling for breath had stopped. It was over. The dimmed bedside light cemented the heavy stillness in the room. Henry's fingertips gently closed his wife's eyelids. Tears welled up in his own eyes, blurring his vision. A car on the street outside drove by, the sound of his engine muffled by the blanket hush of suburbia at 3 a.m. Sinking back into the armchair, parked next to the bed, Henry's own sudden sharp intake of breath surprised him. A series of small, choked sobs congested his chest, making his throat sore. He tried to swallow, to swallow the sore throat away. He thought again of Madeleine's hands, her hand on his, her hand taking the champagne bottle from the delivery man, her fingers wrapped around it. He looked down at the ring on his own finger, set as deeply into the folds of his skin as the wrinkles that surrounded it. The sob softened. The soreness in the throat subsided, and he swallowed. He then heard himself clearing his throat before releasing a long, tired breath. No ventilator. On that point, they had both been adamant. Should they fall to the virus, no matter the severity of the symptoms, there would be no pointless prolongation of their lives, no eking out more time just for the sake of it. Before the outbreak, Madeleine had already been diagnosed with emphysema. No matter what happened, they would continue their shared, splendid isolation to the end. Husband and wife had, after all, been living in their own sort of lockdown for years. Since retirement, they had spent all their time together in their private world, sharing everything, their inner lives an open book to one another. The children had grown up and moved out years ago, both now living abroad, as if having to distance themselves from the intensity of their parents' marriage. Friendships with other couples, based on the convenience of shared childcare, had inevitably fallen by the wayside as those children had grown up. There had been the occasional evening with long unseen school friends, old colleagues from work. But essentially, the tide of Henry and Madeleine's social life had long since gone out, leaving just the two of them happy together on their exclusive little sandbank. Having given himself a few minutes to calm down, Henry pulled himself back up, out of the armchair. He stooped once more over his dead wife, smoothing down Madeleine's wispy grey hair and laying her hands together on the top of the quilt. Sitting down again, he thought about how he could best describe this virus. What were its chief qualities, its characteristics? Virulent was obvious. Then there was deadly, rapid, ongoing, incurable, highly contagious... But it was only now, after the virus had wreaked such havoc on their lives and destroyed them, that Henry considered the quality of tenacity or patience. During the lockdown, whilst he and Madeline had maintained a strict vigilance, the virus had been prowling around their stronghold, probing for an opportunity. With the news of a falling infection rate, they thought they had beaten the virus, outsmarted it. Using the weapons of internet and telephone, they had sealed themselves off completely. Food had been ordered and delivered to the front door, with no human contact whatsoever. They had now been feeling a little smug, congratulating themselves on their success. After watching the news on television, there had been a spontaneous decision to celebrate. The hand-delivered bottle of champagne proved to be the Trojan horse, used by the virus to penetrate the walls of their defence. Madeleine's and the delivery man's fingers briefly touching with the transfer of the bottle. Henry thought he should add the quality clever to patient. The virus had been very clever all right, using the old Trojan horse trick to find a way in. They, on the other hand, had been complacent falsely interpreting the dwindling infection rate numbers 
just as lookouts on the battlements of Troy had done on seeing the sails of the Greek fleet retreating towards the horizon. Henry gazed around the bedroom, its disarray adding to his own sense of loss and abandonment. Medicine bottles, bowls of water, wet, twisted toweling were testament to the desperate caring he had administered during the last days as the virus had taken Madeline in its claws. Constantly attentive at her bedside, covered in her sweat, breathing in her ragged exhalations, Henry had assumed that he must also be infected, the symptoms surely only hours away. He was not a particularly brave man, but love had emboldened him to welcome all the terrible symptoms he saw playing out in front of him. For soon, he would be joining Madeline. Perhaps choosy was the virus's most distinctive and cruelest characteristic. Patient and clever, certainly, but above all, choosy. There was simply no other way to explain his own apparent complete immunity. Even now, he showed none of the symptoms, whilst his wife lay dead in front of him. The irony was unbearable. Henry had wanted and still wanted, indeed longed for, his own death. The curse of his immunity, however, had meant he would not be joining Madeleine. This meant the action he had taken, his last act of true love and ultimate devotion, had ended in separation from Madeleine and not the first step in a reunion. Still seated in the armchair next to the bed, Henry leant down and picked up the pillow he had used from the floor. 